So how was the day? How's your day been? It's been good, uh, ma'am. Good, 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 yeah. How, how about it's, you? It's good. <laughs> it's good. Mm -hmm. It's nice, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so as others join, uh, can one of us lead us in prayer? Zeli, would you be able to lead us in prayer? Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Abba Father, we come before your presence in the name of Jesus. I thank you so much for this beautiful morning that you have blessed us so that we can come together, come together and learn from your word. I thank you, Lord, for our ma'am as he uh, as she teaches the word of God. I pray for your wisdom, your revelation be upon her so that she will be a more peace for you and she can teach according to your will. And also I thank you for each one of our classmates. Give us a receptive heart, a teachable heart, and Holy Spirit empower us so that we can learn new things. This class, Lord, we commit our life, our time, everything to care to Lordship in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Amen. Okay, so let's turn to our notes to chapter 9. Meanwhile, I will also project the notes to us, the presentation. Okay, so today we will be covering on four chapters. One is on angels, godly counsel, and in the next session, we will be covering on the renewed mind, times and seasons. So even before we could start on this chapter, angels, this may be something new to some of us, isn't it? So anyone in our class has this angelic visitation anytime? Have any, have any of us experienced any angelic visitation? It can be in any era. It can be ministered with, to us or it can be through protection. Or have you heard any stories others share as a testimony that they had an angelic visitation? Oh, Ma'am, can I share? Yes, Zeli. Um, like uh, a few years ago, one of our church uh, elder, you know, like um, I was leading the prayer intercession session in the mm -hmm. uh, in the church, you know, and after the service was over, she came to me and she said, "Sister, you know, like uh, as you were leading the prayer and intercession, you know, the Lord just opened up uh, my eyes and I just saw, um, you know." the presence of uh, angels, you know, like just, um, it was like huge around seven to eight foot, like, and he was protecting you. And the moment I saw that I was just so overwhelmed and I was just, you know, thanking the Lord. You know? And I believe that it's, it's, you know, the angel is protecting you and empowering you to do the ministry God has called you to do. And that was such a word of encouragement. And I praise God for that. Man, thank you so much for sharing that, Zeli. Yes, that's so true. Angels are around us. They are sent to minister to us, protect us, you know, be with us. Yes. Anyone else in the class? It'll, uh, this, uh, by sharing, you know, it encourages our faith. We will tend to believe in what God is doing in the spiritual realm. So I would request our class to be much interactive. Anyone else in the class had experienced any such thing with related to the angels? Okay, so we will start with the class. If anyone have any experience, please do let me know. You can always interrupt and, you know, you can share your experience. 
of how Lord has ministered to you. Okay, so let's turn to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. Can one of us please read? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Amen. So we see both in the Old Testament and in the New that God uses angels to send messages, to minister to people. And uh, angels have been sent in the visions or dream to convey a message to people. Uh, we see, uh, you know, in the New Testament, we see how angel of God was sent to Mary to announce the birth of that she's been conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, and we also see again, uh, angel appear to Joseph in a dream, instructing him to take Mary as his wife, where uh, he actually thought that he'll put away Mary silently. But then again, we also see another instance where after the birth of Jesus, angel appearing to Joseph in a dream. And here is instructing him to uh, take the child and Mary and go to Egypt for safety. So there's a protection. There's a angel actually appearing. For Mary, it was the angel appeared real and she could hear the audible voice. And later part, we see the same angel appear to Joseph in a dream. And uh, again, we see again, the angel appear to Joseph in a dream. So such activities were common those days. Do you think those activities are changed now? No, we do hear from people that angels have ministered to them. And in a lot of, uh, you know, in the early church, after the resurrection of Jesus, we see, uh, you know, in, in the book of Acts, we see a lot of angelic encounters that our disciples had. An angel delivered Peter from prison and instructed him to go and preach in the temple. Later, we also see angel instructing Philip to go to Gaza and, you know, uh, to catch up with the eunuch and uh, share the gospel to him. And through that one act of obedience, we see the gospel was taken to Ethiopia. Again, later, we see the angel appear to Cornelius, a Gentile and asked him to send for Peter so that they can hear the gospel. And through this very act of obedience, we see the Cornelius and his family were saved. Again, we see the angel released Peter from the chains and uh, took him out of the prison. There was a high end gate, but, you know, there was a miraculous encounter and there was a supernatural encounter where the iron door broke at the presence of, uh, you know, uh, God sent angel. And later we also see an angel struck Herod and he died. And um, in the book of Acts, there were many angelic encounters we see. So angel can appear even to us and they can speak to us audibly. And, you know, uh, and uh, though angels can be visible and also audible. And at the same time, they can also appear in the dream and they can talk to us or they can also be invisible and just the voice can be heard. So often during this time of worship, we, we sense, you know, uh, in our Bible college, uh, when we had in-person sessions every day in the noon, 12 to 1, we had supernatural session where every day okay so what happens here is now only on fridays we have morning eight to nine but then before in in-person session we used to have every day 12 to 1. so all we did is all the students all put together first year second year third year we used to sit in a circle and just worship the lord we may uh, sing few worship songs and start praying in tongues when we did that, many times, many times we have seen angelic encounters. 
students would have said that, ma'am, I saw uh, there was ascending and descending of angels. Or just like how Zeli shared, the angel was next to some of the student. And uh, when we asked them, did you experience anything? They, they would have said that, you know, uh, uh, you know, in their own way, either the Lord touched them and they were ministered in different ways. But we see when when we worship the lord the presence of angelic being is around us is around us some of us would have experienced any such thing uh, for example um, yeah i have this i have this in practice okay from my class five onwards from school i got this habit of uh, by hearting psalm 91 every time i step out of the house you know uh, i start with psalms 91. so one such instance instant happened in 2009 yes my dad got me a new bike Activa, which was uh, much heavier than what I am, not now, then. I was actually very lean, so I couldn't balance that bike, but then I could ride because I have rode other bikes. And uh, I was very new in riding. And uh, once, uh, uh, you know, as I was riding on a heavy traffic road, on a highway, there were huge lorries used to pass by. So uh, one day as I was riding, suddenly the uh, the uh, the noise of a huge truck passed through me, brought fear into me. And I was so scared. I was so scared. And, you know, I just closed my eyes and said, Lord, I cannot do this. I cannot ride anymore. And I was so fearful. I just closed my eyes, but I continued to ride. And... You know, I said, Lord, I need your help and need your protection. And I, 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 for that fraction of second, when I closed my eyes, I saw God has set his angels in charge of me as we declare it through Psalms 91. You know, one of the angel was holding my bike on the right side and another angel on my left side. So both the sides, there were two angels holding my bike and coming. So this, the fear within me left instantly. And, uh, you know, I, I sense God, God's boldness in me. And that's when I, I saw myself improving in my riding. Till then, I, was, uh, I used to ride alone, not take anyone along with me, but very fearful. But then something happened that day onward that I could take another person... Yeah, another person along with me and there was boldness in my ride, uh, riding. There was no more fear within me. I also had uh, another encounter sometime after many months. Okay, again, maybe this was in 2010, 2000, not 10, 2009. Yeah, it was in 2009. Uh, yes, I remember the month. It was July. I was coming along with my brother. I he was sitting behind me and I was riding the same bike. All of a sudden, there was a car in front of me. When the car passed by, I saw there was a huge ditch in front of me and I could not balance. I could not take right or left. And I know that I'm going to get into the ditch. And in the in the rare in the mirror, in the rear mirror, I'm seeing there's a car, a black Maruti Swift coming behind me. And I knew I'm gone. I just closed my eyes and I, I don't know. It just came out of me. I said, Jesus. And immediately I went into the ditch and we fell. We fell. You know, the bike fell on me and my brother, laptop. We just fell on the road. And, you know, people, yes, they came to assist. And we got up and I was sitting on the, uh, on the, on the platform. You know, uh, they, they just helped me to sit on the platform. And when I looked back, I wanted to see where's the car because that car was very close to me. And between me and the car, there was nothing. Okay. But then I saw the car was stopped much before. And uh, there was another person between us. And uh, she was just standing. 
she was just standing and i looked at her because she was looking very different from others everyone was checking on me am i okay did i get any hurt my knee was hurted and i was declaring over my knee saying that uh, i'm not hurt my bones are not broken and because my senses are saying that uh, my leg was fractured my senses are saying my skin is cut and you know the uh, blood is bleeding on my left knee but then i'm declaring saying that my bones are not broken my skin is not cut and my leg is not bleeding and i'm perfectly fine i'm strong as i kept declaring everyone around me are checking am i fine but there was one person just standing and looking at me she was dressed in white and she was normal to look just like us okay just like the indian attire she was wearing and uh, within me i sensed she's the angel okay something she's the angel who saved you and uh, i could not respond to anyone around me but uh, you know all my attention was uh, looking at her like uh, is she an angel is she an angel and i looked at her and i asked her, uh, what's your name she she looked at me and she said i'm angel and this is the only message that she told me she said god saved you your god saved you that's it i do uh, you know i don't know how she came but she was just standing there she didn't even en- enquire how are you because she knew that i was perfectly fine and this is the only message she said she said my name is angel and god saved you and she was no special there was no halo on her head or uh, she was looking something very differently dressed no in fact she was wearing salwar white salwar just like indian dressed and she said until day i have this confirmation within me like she was the angel you know god sent to protect me that day it was not only that day something invisible but there is always god's protection over us because we claim for god's protection so as uh, been said with all this one thing we need to know is we do not worship angels but we worship only the lord most high we do not seek for any angelic visitation our focus should remain only on jesus not on any ministering angels we must discern every angelic visitation we should know what is the message they carried because we all, because the scripture says that satan and his demons can also imitate angel of light we ask god for the assistant of his angels because that's what his word says and we speak god's promise declaring what his angel do for us and they respond to the voice of his word we can definitely ask god send your angels to protect us in our way in our the path that we are going or if somebody is traveling we can always say lord send your angels with them guard them guide them protect them so we can but we but we should be very careful from worshiping any angel being except the lord jesus so with this we will move on to the next next lesson yeah we do not worship any angels we ask god for the assistance of his angels we speak god's promise declaring what is angels do for us with this we will move on to the next lesson godly counsel i'm just sharing the notes okay so we went through the angel next we will go through the godly counsel can one of us turn to psalms chapter 73 verse 24 psalms 73 verses 24 you will guide me with your counsel and afterward receive me to glory yes 
So one important way that God communicates to us is through his guidance. We all know the three ways how God uh, guides us through his word, through his inner witness and through his Holy Spirit. And God also uses people to speak into our lives so that, you know, they can help and guide us into the right path in our life. So Psalms 73, 24 says that you will guide me with your counsel and afterward receive me to his glory. And Proverbs eleven fourteen says there are many plans in a man's heart. Sorry, there are uh, where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. It is very important for us to take counsel from everyone. Or from, uh, from um, you know, not from one person, but from many so that we are safe. We are safe. So this is what we do is, uh, you know, as a team at APC, if there's any major discussion or decision to be made, we always, you know, uh, take counsel from each other. We come for a meeting. We discuss out, take ideas from many and uh, choose the right one. And in that counsel, we see there's, uh, you know, great plan of God been fulfilled so we are safe when there is no counsel the people fall but in multitude of counselors there is safety proverbs 15 22 says without counsel plans go awry but in multitude of counselors there are established very important to take counsel from many so that our plans can be established. Proverbs 19.20, listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days. Very important so that we develop this ability within us to listen and to receive. Because most of us, you know, it, it, it takes humility for us to listen to another person, uh, to take their guidance or to listen to their instruction. It does not come very easy. It is a natural sense of a human not to listen to others and think that we know and we should lead ourselves. And we also have this preconceived notion that we know and let, uh, you know, I can lead my life. And we get into many trouble. So to avoid those pitfalls, it would be good for us to take counsel, a godly counsel from the other people, from other counselors uh, who has uh, lived their life with the fear of God. So that when we take their counsel, we can see ourselves been, uh, you know, guided in the right path so that we can avoid much pitfalls in our life. The mistakes that they have made, the lessons that they have learned that, you know, they can share those guidance, those warnings to us so that we may not fall into the same mistake what they have committed long ago. Proverbs 20, 18 says, plans are established by counsel. My wise counsel wage war. Sometimes the counsel that we receive wages war. But then when we have received this counsel, even during a difficult situation, even when we face challenges in our life, the counsel that was given to us, the idea, the plan that they had shared from 
uh, the counselor would have shared from their life will come to our mind. The Lord will remind us in our difficult situation so that we may not give up. Holy Spirit is our counselor. During a difficult situation, when we go through the word of God, when the word speaks to us, when the word shares the people of God in the Bible, when they went through the difficult time, how they seek God, how they prayed, how they never gave up. When those words speak to us, it encourages us in our difficult situation. One way is through the word, which we already saw. And when we go through a godly counsel, the man of God, a woman of God who shares their experience or speak into our situation and give us the word, the encouraging word, though things around us, the circumstance, the situation may not be in favor of us. But then when we trust them, when we trust them, we are safe. The word encourages to hold on to that promise. Hold on to that counsel and go through the situation, hoping that God will help us to cross through that path. And when we press on, we will see the victory. Many of us in our class, I'm sure each of us would uh, will have a testimony to share on this. When you were going through a difficult time, you were encouraged by the word of God to hold on to his promise. Some of us would have already crossed that circumstance or situation and have won the victory over that. Or some of us may be in middle of the circumstances. But trust God. Trust on his promise which says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. And every godly counsel that has been given to us timely will help us to overcome our situation. Receiving right counsel is very important. Receiving right counsel. We must receive this counsel from people, you know, who are deep in the word. And they, they have walked with the Lord for a very long time. And they have faced many circumstances in their life. And they share the counsel based on the word and they submit to the Holy Spirit. We must, you know, take counsel from such people so that, you know, we can receive the right counsel from them at the right season. And when we receive counsel from them, we need to be humble enough to receive it and, you know, apply it in our life. Take action on what they have guided us. Sometimes it, not, it may not be very pleasant from what we expected. It may be totally opposite to what we expect. This is what in Psalms chapter 1 verse 1 says. Blessed is the man who walks in, not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scornful. When we go to this expert, when we go uh, uh, to this council and they give us, when we listen to their, eye, uh, to their advice, we see God's blessing over our life. And also, uh, there are different counselors according to our need. If in case you want to, you want to uh, take up a medical advice, we have a medical counselor, something to do with finance, education, professional matters. So based on each uh, uh, criteria we have a counselor but it would be good for us to seek a godly counsel a men and women who walk in the counsel of god so that we can get the right counsel at the right time but what more important is are we willing to be corrected sometimes we would like to receive the plan of a counselor when that is aligned to our plan we will say, huh, this counsel is very good. And, uh, you know, I would like to go to that person. And, you know, you see that person, even though if it is wrong, that person repeatedly gives, uh, you know, exactly what you want. I don't think that's the right thing. A counselor who advises you, who corrects you when you're wrong, 
even you may be hurt or you may have to undo your plans it is good to take their advice initially you may feel bad you may uh, you may uh, get upset or uh, mad at that counselor for giving you a counsel that is not aligned with your plan he's not giving you any affirmation of what you have planned and you put it across to him but in fact he is trying to correct you he's asking you to wait he's he's asking you to wait on the lord or, or this plan is not aligned with your studies with your career or what god has promised you so he is he is actually maybe he's asking you to undo certain things or bring a correction in you but what is much required is we need to humble ourselves and receive that guidance some years back i remember i went to a counselor to make some life decision i went to this counselor checking if this is right he examined he, he asked me many questions and then at the end of uh, you know at the end of that session he said this is not right this is not from god this is just the timely desire that you have got to overcome your situation but this is not what god wanted you to do at this time it was very difficult for me to accept that counsel from the man of god i felt that he is against my decision he is not in favor of me but i never thought that he is in favor of what god has in store for me he simply bluntly declared this is what god wants you to do and what you have planned or what you wanted to what you have decided to make a decision is not from god he was very blunt he never thought to please me but it was very very hard for me to accept that counsel it took at least a week or two for me to accept it i was very sad when the man of god told that i came yes i was sad but asking god to strengthen me to accept that counsel today when i look back i'm very thankful to god and to the counselor in fact some years back i called him i said thank you for correcting me at that season i needed that word if not my life would have been uh, you know deviated from what god wanted me to do in my life when we trust god god leads us to the right counsel and even if that counselor uh, you know um, gives us an advice that is not aligned with what we think or what we want to do but then if it is aligned by the word of god i think we need to be humble enough to receive it because we may not have the complete understanding then but then later trust god that god will give us the understanding we have been yes we all have wisdom we all have the understanding our brain is just this much but god has much bigger plan for us our mind cannot understand cannot grasp the god's wisdom his understanding his plan his will but one thing we need to rely on jeremiah 29 11 saying that god has a plan for me plan to prosper me what you and i can think for ourselves is much little than what god has in store so these incidents in my life has made me today to trust god much more than what i could think on us what i believed would be the best when people spoke into my life with the right counsel saying this is not god has much more bigger brighter better though it was hard for me to receive that counsel 
but then i simply waited on god letting go of what was in my hand yes those days it was very hard to do that but then god has trained me in my life today when i let go of many many opportunities in my life that was not aligned with god today for me to let go of certain things is but much easy because i trust god and i've seen his hand over my life carrying me through days and weeks and months and years and i trust god today that god has much better plan than what or i can think of for myself and god has brought me to a place where i can just receive god's uh, you know guidance the correction from people of god and trust god to you know uh, to uh, to to develop me to the better person what i could be and these days i seek for those corrections and feedback because i know it is in them that i can build myself it is in those correction and in those feedback that make me a better person so these days for me to receive the feedback or correction it's become a blessing for me than receiving a good feedback good feedback is good yes it encourages us it appreciates us you know makes us go yes but at the same time you know correction is it is much more better because it prunes us it makes us grow to the next level here we need to have a attitude of humility to receive that correction to apply it in our life and willingness to change ourselves to the way of god and trust god completely because his plans are much better than what you and i can have Proverbs 12:1 says whoever loves instruction loves knowledge but he who hates correction is stupid so we need to you know we need to receive godly instruction with all our heart and apply it in our life it is for our good Proverbs 13:18 says poverty and shame will come to him who disdain correction but he who disregards a rebuke will be honored Proverbs twenty nine one says, "He who is often rebuked and hardens his neck will suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy." We don't have to go through this, because when we go to the council, they will all they will advise us with the right path. But we should be willing to listen to them so that we can avoid such pitfalls in our life. next one is very important the counsel of godly parents always remember it is very difficult you know for a child to receive an instruction from parents i will not say everyone but some of us if the same instruction is been given by their own friend friend you know it's very easy to receive it than receiving it from our parents but one thing i must say is parents have always thought good for us they love us they desire good things to happen for us proverbs 13 one says a wise son heeds his father's instruction but a scoffer a mocker does not listen to rebuke a wise son heeds his father we need to be that wise son who can listen to the father's instruction proverbs 1 8 to 9 says my son hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother for they will be graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck 
So one of the, you know, one of the honorable thing that we could do is to receive the counsel from our parents. They have brought us up. They always, you know, they see good things to happen to their children. So when we hear their counsel, their instruction, it is just that we are obeying God. Again, godly counsel. Their counsel will help us to walk in honor, in honor among the other children. Again, there are parents who, uh, there are sometimes, you know, we get wrong counsel from parents, but we need to be wise enough. Also take the counsel from others. So there was an example here of Jesus himself, how Jesus waited 30 years to get into the ministry. In the same way, if you and I have got a call, we, there is a preparation process that we need to go through. At the same time, we all need to be educated as well. We need to go through our studies and then get into the ministry. When we hear the counsel of our parents and obey them, God, it, we are honoring God by obeying our parents, by honoring them, by keeping up their counsel. And we will be the delight to God and to our parents. So any of us have an example or uh, a testimony to share based on today's class? How godly counsel has helped you? Or was there any angelic visitation or angelic uh, encounter that you had in your ministry in your life that you would like to share for the benefit of the class? Please feel free to share with all of us. Anyone? John, you would like to share your experience with regard to godly counsel or any angelic visitation? Godly counsel, yes. Um, angelic visitation, no, I have not uh, experienced any angelic visitations uh, physically. Uh, but uh, quite a lot of times while uh, worshipping, we have felt the presence of God. Uh, yes. and some of us, uh, some sometimes... Uh, People have testified they saw something, they saw angel, uh, but I haven't seen, uh, I didn't have that experience yet. Godly counsel, yes, uh, while taking um, serious decisions in life, uh, like one example what I want to share is when, uh, when I finished my bachelor's degree and then wanted to do master's, um, so I was part of a church which is uh, which I was very active in Kerala, and we also I was also part of uh, youth ministry back then. Um, I wanted to study for master's degree, and I wanted to study in Manipal, which is uh, an hour night journey from Kerala, the place where I was staying. So I discussed with the pastor there, and uh, he said he could have held me back, but he said it is good for your future. You need to go. So. Um, and if he would have asked me to stay back, I wouldn't have gone, that's for sure. But he guided me in that direction so that, um, you know, I could study more and, um, you know, God used there also. So I think that's one of the godly counsel which I received. Please, God. Anyone else would like to share? Divya?
Nikki. It can be anyone. It can be anyone. Brother Abu Bakr, Brother Subhashish, anyone from our class, any godly counsel that has helped you to grow in the ministry, to grow in your life. Uh, Ma'am, can I share? Yes, Zeli. Um, uh, regarding godly counsel, you know, like, um, uh, I really used to have a heart for missions and to be uh, to God for a missionary uh, thing. So mm -hmm. at the time, as I was working with one of the pastor in uh, Dimapur, and you know, like I've been, I was working as a full time staff for three years back then, and you know, I just feel that it's time for me to step out in faith and venture in the missions. So I was just praying and I talked with my senior pastor there and I just uh, I shared my heart's desire to pastor and, you know, he understood my heart. And I really don't know, I want to go for a mission, but I really don't know where or to which nation. And through his godly counsel and through his encouragement, you know, like he connected me to uh, one missionary couple in Cambodia and he's the one arranging everything for me. And he talked with them and through uh, my senior pastor's connection, I was able to serve there in the nation of Cambodia for two years. And I'm so blessed and I'm glad that, yes. you know, I also my pastor and he said, no, as a church, we need you. But if that's what you have in your heart, I freely release you and with his prayers and with the blessing of our church there they released me to go to the mission field so praise god for that yes that's nice that's nice sid you would like to share something yes ma'am ma'am it was something happened about godly godly counseling after completing my after completing my 12th standard i was looking for which course to choose and which college to go so what happened i was looking from college to college from course to course but suddenly my grandmother came in between and she said what do you want to do i said i want to i want to do serve lord and i want to do something for the people who are underprivileged so she said why so she prayed over me and she said you don't worry god will come god will open up God will open a way for you. Suddenly, I was just scrolling my Google. Then it, there was a post by the name called Bachelor's of Social Work. So I went inside. I scrolled it out. And it was exactly the same which I was looking for. Then after that, my father told me that, do you are, are you interested in ministry? I said, yes. Then he said, there is a Bible school by the name. My pastor friend, Pastor Asish Rice was having a Bible school. So I just went and through and I... I went in through and I scrolled the APC website. Then I saw like it's it's kind of for me only and all the courses that were your know, the lifestyle, the evangelism and all the courses and prayer intercession. I went through and I thought like this is for me. Then I prayed. Then by the time I was applying, by the grace of God, I got a tuition waiver also. So like that, I was just applying and I thought that this is from the God and I thank God and now all the things are on track by the grace of God. Now I'm doing Bachelor's of Social Work also, and I'm a student of BTH also. I Please thank God. God. I thank for. I thank God for the counseling. Mm. Praise God. That's wonderful, Sid. Thank you for sharing. That's nice. Yes, godly counsel, and at the right time when we receive it with all humility, and when we apply it in our life, we see God's plan being unfold in our life and God's blessing also there. And he supports us and he guards us and guides us, nurture us to grow in that area. So let's take a quick break of 10 minutes and be back by 11, 10 o'clock. Okay.
Thank you. After 10 minutes, we shall be back because we are in different time zone. Just take a 10 minutes break and we can be back after that. Thank you. God bless.